Hello everyone, welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, episode number 258, recorded August 7th, 2017. I am your host, Deron Land, I'm your Deron Land host. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that'll work. I'm your host, Deron Land, aka Weird words. Wolf. Yes, words, they, they, they escape me. The goggles, they do nothing. Uh, <laughs> also with me this evening is Brett, aka Megamus. Hi. Hi. He is not high, even though he's wearing a green shirt. Yes. Unleash the beast. Hulk. Yes. That's right. And someone that is not unleashing the beast because podcasting has whooped his butt the last few days. <laughs> we Master Don. Massey pun there. Yes. Yeah, well, Massey's Matt, probably whooped his butt too. Well, Matt Massey's being snoozy boy. It's middle of the day. He's curled up in a box snoozing. <laughs> well, as uh, as we mentioned uh, on last week's episode, uh, this episode is being pre-recorded because I will not be available uh, to do the uh, to the live show. Um, and Brett is his computer is still you know up in the yep. air. Uh, so uh, as such, we are pre-recording this one. So if you have any comments or questions, still go ahead and leave them, or you can tweet them at us at tfylp. Uh, or on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Uh, some great places to go there. Uh, over at the uh, other side of the screen here, is, as you can see me pointing, if you're watching the video, our sponsors, CapturePrey.com. Great toys, great prices, great service, where you can save even more on domestic orders with free domestic shipping on orders of $150 or more. And if you are an international po- an international purchaser, see words, they are hard. Um, if you're an international purchaser, uh, you can get uh, discounted shipping on orders of $150 or more. CapturePrey.com, great, press, great toys, great prices, great service. I will get it out here in a moment. Yeah, let me get a drink here. Mm. Words. Also, who is... Good with words. Mega Toy Fan. He can maximize your collection while minimizing your cost. Mega Toy Fan, you can find him at uh, popular robot and toy conventions year round, such as uh, TF Con coming up, uh, what is it, October, I think? Yes. End of September. That, end of September. Uh, so you can find him there, or you can just contact him on Facebook. Just search for Megamus, and I'm sure you can find him on there somewhere. He's a part of Mary, a myriad groups. Uh, uh, collector groups on there. You can probably go on there and just top out Megamus, and he'll probably come zipping right along. Say, if you say it three times, I'll appear. Yes. And if, yeah, never mind. I was going to say something. <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> and try to keep it this way today. Try, probably right. fail. Well, what you wouldn't fail at is if you went to RippedApparel.com and you that? ordered some really cool shirts, kind of like the one that I'm wearing right now, the Grimlock and uh, Jurassic Park um, mishmash t- uh, t-shirt. Uh, lots of great uh, Transformer-related shirts and other pop culture-related shirts at RippedApparel.com. Uh, whenever you go on the checkout, after you select the items that you want to purchase under the promo code, be sure to type in TFYLP pod, uh, all in capital letters, and you will get 10% off on your order at RippedApparel.com. Great, uh, great, great little store there. And also, if you love what we do, down here at the bottom of the screen in the orange, it's our Patreon. We have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, with the uh, little money that you donate to us each month, uh, it helps us uh, upgrade equipment and uh, kind of like the uh, the microphone that you see dangling down here. Uh, the you know we can upgrade equipment, we can pay for our server fees, uh, upgrade software, uh, you know, keep our computers in working condition. Uh, I I had a USB uh, go out on me after last week's show. It just like quit working on me, so I had to go on Amazon and use some of that cash to get a new USB hub for my computer. So we thank everybody that helps us uh, continue this show. Uh, it is not cheap. Um, so uh, everybody that's helping us is uh, we are eternally indebted to you. Indentured servitude, I suppose it were. Sure. Yes. Uh, 
But, um, you know, if you love uh, TFYLP a lot too, there's something else new that you can check out. Well, what's uh, old is new again. Uh, I've rediscovered some uh, archives of old uh, video that we had, uh, some old shows that we had uh, several years ago uh, on a uh, personal YouTube channel that I used to have. Uh, it's where we used to broadcast the shows. And I have been downloading them and uh, re-encoding them with the uh, updated uh, TFYLP look and everything. And it's some classic TFYLP episodes. I'm calling them TFYLP Classics. Uh, you can check out episode number 46, uh, broadcast, broadcast way back in August of 2012. That's what, five years ago. So just goes to show you, we've been around a while, guys. So uh, uh, some great stuff on there. And we talk about Transformers Prime. Uh, in that episode and uh, uh, Fall of Cybertron. So if you're big fans of both of those, uh, be sure to check out the TFYLP Classic episode 46. Uh, it is now live on our YouTube channel. Just go in there and uh, scroll down till you see it. It should be, uh, if you're looking for it uh, recently uh, after this episode, um, it should be near the top. So just check that out. Uh, something else new that we're wanting to try uh, Brett is going to be doing something uh, new tomorrow as of this airing. This is airing on Saturday night. Uh, so, Brett, you want to tell them a little bit about what uh, what the idea is? Well, um, so next Sunday, um, I haven't determined a time yet, but we're going to post it. It'll be Sunday, uh, we're after, try. the Sunday after this air. So, yes. Right, right. Um, so, basically, it's we're going to have a uh, TFYLP live auction. And each one of us, you know, are going to take turns hosting it uh, with the items that they're they're wanting to sell, and it'll just be a live auction. And um, I've been looking at a lot of them on uh, Facebook, and, and the auction will be through Facebook. Uh, a lot of auction sites, uh, Facebook sites, are doing them, and they're, they're they're really successful. You get a lot of great deals, and um, you know, it, it works both ways. I, I get like for me. I get rid of a lot of stock that is just taking up space, and you guys get it dirt cheap. So that's that's basically what it is. All you'll do is you'll go to the TFYLP Facebook page. You'll see the link. You click on it, and you just start bidding. Simple as that. So and you need at least what about at least ten people? Uh, yeah, get, I'd like to, have, to really get I'd it like going. Have, yeah, I'd like to have ten to twenty people in it. So uh, it, that's going to be about the only caveat is if we don't get enough people that it's not really worth doing uh and i was asking and i also posted this on the uh, facebook page is what would you guys like to see in the live auction because i have many many different lines and rather than bore everyone that wants you know g1 with animated and prime and this i would jump to the g1 conversely if you really wanted the animated or prime i would rather throw that out there for you guys so i need to know and there's just it's too wide of stuff, and I figure most of them go for a couple hours, which I, I kind of think is a little long. Um, I figure I'm going to limit it to about 45 minutes, an hour tops. Depends on how well the the auctions are going and everything. Put about you know 50, about 20 25 items up, and we'll see how it goes. So something new we we're, we're, we're trying. Absolutely. So uh, check out the live auction. You know about what time you want to start it on uh, Sunday? Um, I'd like to do it around 7. 7 p.m. 7 or Eastern? 8 Eastern time. Yeah. But that'll definitely be uh, in the posting on the Facebook page. Yeah, and we're gonna All this week we're going to try and uh, get it organized, get the information out, and get feedback. That's the main thing I want. Please give us feedback. Let us know what you want. You know, If you think it's a horrible idea, we won't do it. So... Let us know. So, if you what if you think it's a squeeze play idea, or possibly a fangry idea? Fangry idea. Well, you you said if it's a horrible idea, we we won't do it. Okay, you, you with the you, puns? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you if you if you do that again, Jim will show up. <laughs> no, he'll he'll show up if I mention terrible. Many times, and then he'll come back to uh, to correct me. <laughs> yes. 
Come back but, to haunt uh, you in your dreams. But yeah, uh, for further information, check out the Facebook group uh, at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Again, uh, we have uh, quite an active group on there, always sharing news, uh, new cool pictures. Um, you know, uh, you can find out anything about the show, interact with us uh, uh, who are on the show. We're all on there. And we, uh, we're, we're all pretty active on there. Um, so if there's any uh, further updates on this, check that out. And I'm sure Brett can relay it to me uh, and we can put it on the Twitter account at TFYLP. So be sure to follow us on there. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, state us on there. Uh, if you are the first person to uh, follow us on Twitter after I, I mentioned this, if you have not followed us on Twitter, follow at TFYLP on Twitter and send me a direct message on Twitter uh, and say, hey, I'm listening to TFYLP and uh, am I the first person to, uh, to message you? If the first person to message me gets a free toy, a uh, free Kabaya kit, as courtesy of our sponsor, Captured Prey. Uh, so follow us on Twitter, at TFYLP, and send uh, at TFYLP a direct message. And the first person to do that gets a free toy. Just as simple as that. Uh, so if you are already a follower of us on TFYLP, thank you. Uh, but we, we want new followers too. So that's what this is for. The very first new for a new follower... If you, if I see that you are a new follower, and then you send us a direct uh, message, then uh, you will get the toy if you're a first one. Easy. Good deal. Easy peasy. So right. t uh, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, value. Uh, is it increasing, decreasing, uh, whatnot? And then we're also going to go into uh, vintage knockoffs of Transformer ideas. Uh, not, uh, I mean, vintage, uh, vintage knockoffs, sometimes they went, you know, a totally different way. And a lot of them are very unique, but then there are some that are, you, you're, you're like, that is a direct knockoff of a transformer or a transformer idea. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that specifically, uh, tonight. Uh, and we have a resident expert in those and headmaster Don. Oh, wait a minute. No, Don's not the expert in that. That would be. That would be that guy up there that's grinning from ear to yeah. ear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. So, um, value. You know, uh, a lot a lot of people know that uh, I'm I'm selling some things here lately, uh, kind of paring the collection down. I, the, the display cases behind me are actually starting to get kind of kind of sparse now. That's surprisingly, but that's that's a good thing. Um, then uh, Brett, he deals in selling things all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so. I'd say he's he's pretty uh, professional on that level. You know, you you have you right. have a Try you have be an as insight. knowledgeable as possible. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about are things kind of holding their value? Uh, and this this idea came about uh, recently. Uh, we were talking uh, after the show about how. Uh, or it might have been before the show, I forgot, but uh, but how uh, the older fans, uh, like the Generation 1 fans like us, were getting older. A lot of people are either, they are they either have what, they're, what they've been looking for, they either have the G1s, so they're therefore not flooding the market and looking for uh, new toys, uh, or they, don't, they just don't want them. Or they're getting out of collecting altogether and just not not buying toys at all. Uh, so the demand goes down, the price goes down. You know, the higher the demand, the more the price. Uh, so let's kind of talk a little bit and focus on you know whether or not we think the brand, at least as far as vintage collecting, uh, and we mean vintage, vintage like Generation One, G Two. And I guess at this point we can talk Beast Wars, uh, you know, because we're talking 20 years. Uh, so uh, are things kind of holding their value or are they really, really going down? What do you think, Brett? Well, it's, it was a, 
I was told that a good thing to look at is cycles, and cycles of about 10 years, and things seem to cycle through. Uh, you get um, like a, the, the G1 when you grew up with it, and then you get about 10 years, you get old enough to where you're, you know, you're sustaining yourself, you have a viable income. Then you Disposable want to income, your, as it were. Yes. Then you want to go ahead and pick up the toys uh, from your youth. And that seems to go about every 10 years. So it got me to thinking, well, okay, how long has it been? Are we in that in between that now? Or are we at the end or at the beginning or what? And one of the things that I was noticing, because we were talking about the, uh, the, the live Facebook auctions that we want to do and everything, and not to put a uh, damper on it, but one of the things I noticed is stuff w was selling very cheap. So it got me to thinking, well, is it because limited market? Is it because um, interest is just going down? And this wasn't just Transformers. I was actually looking at uh, uh, just uh, it was just nothing but toys and comics and this, that, and the other. And I noticed across the board, it just seemed like stuff that I knew, hey, that, you know, that should have gone for a lot more than it did. Um, and like I said, one of the big, big comments is going to be, well, it was a limited audience. But even if you look on like eBay, which whether you like eBay or, or hate it, that's generally where you get you gauge your your value from because that's the most openly widely used market for collecting and selling toys and i've noticed a decrease uh, unless it's something extremely rare the the prices are going down i see it day after day after day i don't know if you guys follow this stuff or if there's anything that you guys have been looking for, have you noticed that it's gone down or whatever? Well, the only thing that really – go ahead. I mean, you know, like I said, I've, I've been starting to sell some, th uh, sell some things lately, although most of what I'm selling is, I guess, mostly uh, current stuff, you know, like Masterpiece and some of the current line stuff, uh, which, you know, I'm surprised some of the Masterpieces even aren't bringing yeah. back the prices that they originally I, went I was, for. I was actually going to go into that. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, original, like the, the cars, uh, you know, you buy them for 60 and $70 a piece, be lucky if you get 50 out of them, you know, lucky, right. you well, know, and, and that's, that's, you know, well, that and that's the, the current hotline, you know. Well, that's what I was going to say is I'm not just talking about G1 because some people are, you know, well, that's, that's more of a limited market and it kind of isn't, but masterpiece was always the line that you know, I mean you could you could always bank on it you could always bank on it you know, ever since you know even before mp10 but when mp10 hit and never did you see the price of that thing go down never now granted they they keep puking re remold not real molds but reissues of it out but There's one still. on the shelf now <laughs> right um, but look at your cars I mean they haven't redone uh, the, the all the cars. And the prices of those have gone down. You know, um, oh my God. Remember when uh, Wheeljack was first announced? Everyone went nuts. They couldn't wait for it. Mm -hmm. And it was automatically, bam, selling for 20, exhaust. 30. Look yeah. at exhaust. Look at exhaust. Exhaust, uh, exhaust was going for like 90 or, no, uh, or over greater, 100. Uh, over yeah. 100, you know, depending on where you got it from. Now right. you can get one sealed for, a, a legit one sealed for 70 or less, you know. Well, and that brings up another point: is is it because of the the knockoff stuff? And I think gonna, it, it I don't is. think it is. I think it has a little bit, but I just think the interest overall is waning. I think the people that are willing to spend the money on masterpieces, uh, the, some of the knockoffs are good enough quality, and I say good enough quality. Uh, I'll put that enough in there uh, that a lot of people is like you know. To save 20 or 30 bucks, I'm going to go ahead and get the knockoff. Uh, and that in and of itself is hurting the official market. Uh, you know, I, 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 I think a little. I think a little. Well, I had I had my uh, uh, my official Ultra Magnus up for sale. I went ahead and pulled it last night because they already uh, announced an official reissue of it. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, who's going to want to buy a used one 
when you can go buy a brand new one. And I want to, you know, I don't want to, I'm not, I know I'm not going to make my money back on it, but I don't want to lose my ass on it either. You know, so right. I'm not going to, you know, sell it for 30 bucks under, under value just to unload it. You know, I'd rather keep it. You know, it's a great toy. I just don't want to lose my ass on it. And it's, you know, and when, whenever you get into the talk of vintage uh, toys, uh, I know some of the later years, like like the Headmasters, those are uh, kind of keeping their value right now. They're kind of high value, but they're not as high as they used to be. Right. But uh, yeah. but but at the same time, uh, you look at the Autobot cars, you know, the, uh, from the 84, 85 line, those are going down in value. Uh, and the the later years are going up or staying the same, and then I, I, I foresee in the next year to two years, they're going to dip, and probably we're, we're going to see MicroMasters shooting up in value, maybe early, uh, maybe some of the G2 stuff. Uh, you know, that's that stuff. I, I, like you said, the 10-year waves. It, it, it does. It seems to go about every 10 years. Don, what's your comment on this? Well... I th- it also has a lot to depend on what figure you're looking at. Uh, the stuff that's going to be your Holy Grails are still going to be your Minerva, your Grandis, people that want the late G1 stuff like Overlord or Star Convoy, even though there was a reissue of it several years ago. Um, the, if you want like Battle Gaia or Guard City, that stuff really, a third party is not going to really hurt that to a degree. Uh, I don't believe it will some, but the people that are looking for those big ticket items want the official, the real one. So, you know, it's like, but like for people like me, I want a Minerva, but I'm not spending 500 to $700 for a box Minerva that can turn yellow over the course of six months due to the, due to the yellowing in the age plastic. Mm-hmm. When I can get a third party one for let's say a hundred dollars or so, that would be a great stand in. So, you know, there is some some characters where a third party would be fine. There's some characters, like, like, like Downbeat. Brett, you and I have talked about how good Downbeat mm-hmm. is and that Very it, much. Is, it is our jazz. And both you and I have said we can't see Takara doing much better with this to make us forego this for an official jazz. I mean, right. they might, but I was it would be hard-pressed to me to see them do that. The only thing that they could probably do better is increase the cartoon accuracy, I think. I mean, I know Downbeat is really, really good on the accuracy, but, I mean, look at uh, Bad Cube's uh, 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 Sun Surge. I thought it was pretty damn accurate, and it is. But then you see the official masterpiece, and you're like, "Oh yeah, they did that right. That looks, that does look more cartoon yeah. accurate." But uh, so I'm sure that that if there is an official jazz that eventually comes, uh, that it will have those those little cues that are done better than than downbeat. But right. engineering wise, I I don't see them doing a whole lot better. But again, you know, and like we like we talked about before on that sun surge, a lot of people are selling their selling theirs in in lieu of getting sunstreaker. But is what you're getting going from Sun Surge to Sunstreaker worth spending the $119 for Sunstreaker when you've already got a good representation of Sunstreaker in Sun Surge? So, again, it, it, all, it all comes down to your your personal taste on where that falls, and, we, and we've well, talked about that on several videos. I, I've got a little uh, caveat to that, though. I mean, you know, and I said several episodes ago that I was not going to sell my Sun Surge. And I was going to get go ahead and get the Sunstreaker, but you know, whenever I, I decided to reevaluate evaluate my collecting habits and and everything, it wouldn't make sense for me to have two Sunstreakers. So I'm I'm going to go. That's why I decided to go ahead, sell the Sun Surge, and get the official one because it is the most accurate looking sunstreaker in my opinion oh and you're not the first person i've heard tell me that i mean but, by, by, by no stretch of the imagination but if i if i were to uh to continue the way i was collecting i would have no qualms keeping both because or just you know saying screw the official one i've already got a great one um, well you know and for me it's sort of the exact opposite sunstreaker does not have that sense of 
connection. So I don't need the best representation of him when I have a good one in my collection. Now, Trailbreaker. Trailbreaker is a is one of my favorite G1 characters and one of one of my favorite toys. Just he he's the big fat guy that makes people laugh, which kind of fits with me, sort of. Um, because I'm a big fat guy, I like to make people laugh. But uh, that's why I haven't bought any of the third party trailbreakers, is none of them are just not quite right. I did buy the I did buy the hoist from um X Transbots. Uh, P- P- A- on, P- P- I can never pronounce that name anyway. Um, but hoist isn't as important to me being right as Trailbreaker is. But as far as the value, when Trailbreaker comes out, is that going to cause the drop in these other third parties? I believe so because a lot of people I've talked to, none of the third party Trailbreakers are getting it exactly right. Some are closer than others in some cases, but every single one of them, you're quite missing it on a couple of aspects. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying the Takara is going to be perfect, but I believe when that comes out, you're going to be looking at what you're looking at for Sunstreaker. But then you've got ones like Tracks. I like Tracks, but the Tracks is not the best masterpiece. And I'm still seeing the generations version going for 20 and 30 dollars on card because a lot of people still like that tracks do you think the third parties will actually tackle tracks and try to do it better than the official they may but there's so much there's so there's so many figures that they haven't done that if they want to get ahead of takara and try to beat them to the punch with say more mini bots um, more Decepticons. Another uh, another Devastator, maybe, or Predicate. Uh, no, I'd rather I <laughs> if they're if they're smart, they're they're going to go away from those and try to say, okay, let's do the Dinobots. Well, well, it's like it's like there's several companies out there that are doing that are doing War for Cybertron. Okay, that's a very niche focus for figures, but they found their groove and stuck with it. So they're meeting a need very few people are meeting. I'm hoping what we see now is, and we discussed this on the show last week, that third party has a chance now to see what, ha- has, see what Hasbro's doing and find something that's not being done to stand out from the crowd. But is that going to affect the price of the official stuff? I think it's going to depend on what the character is are are they remaking tracks are they doing their first minerva or are they doing a are they doing a third party grandis or are they doing a ride in sets as you know what are they tackling because let's look at hades i doubt very i doubt very much the hades combiner affected the price of the g1 lyle kaiser components that much I really, I really don't see that being a case because if you're if you want a Lyle Kaiser gift set, you're, you're going, going to get, to get a Lyle yeah. Kaiser gift set. You know, there's that. So there's a lot, there's a lot of little bits and pieces on whether the value is affected. It also comes down to is like as I said, is is the money you're paying for this new official worth what you've already paid for the unofficial? And are you getting that much more importance by swapping them out? That's going to affect your your value. Is value is always subjective anyway. But when you, when you take into account how many people have gone through Generation One, Generation Two, Beast Wars, how important the character is to you, how accurate do you like the car mode more? Do you like the robot mode more? Is scale one of those things that you have to go by to be right? All that's going to factor into this value quote, quote, uh, coefficient, and it's going to vary from person to person. Yeah. Well, I, there was one thing I was going to mention. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do it now. We're not going to segue, but this would have been a perfect part to segue into. But you were talking about that the, 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 your holy grails didn't really uh, – it didn't affect the value. Uh, and you mentioned like um, I think you mentioned Leo Kaiser and some of the others. And one of the ones I was thinking of was Dino King. And Dino King, 
Leo Kaiser and all those had back in the 80s knockoffs that were very, 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 very close in quality and looks and everything to such a degree that I guarantee there's some people that think they have a 100% complete Dino King that probably have knockoff vintage Taiwanese parts in it. They're that close. Well, it's like my Road Caesar. I bought knockoff swords to right. complete it out. I mean, th- and they look like the real deal. They're just the wrong color. Right. Well, the, the one that I'm talking about, they same color and everything, very, very minuscule difference. Um, and that was made by, and I think the company's called Metamorphs. And they did... Um, they did different ones like uh, Sandstorm. They did Dino King. They did Leo Kaiser. Uh, and they're very, very close. The differences on Dino King are the shells. The shells are colored different. Um, but I don't think that affected the price. That, getting back to my point, I don't think having that knockoff affected the price. There are just some things that are going to retain their value. When um, Fort ba- Max was reissued, the price of the original Fort Maxes went down. Grand Max didn't. Mm-hmm. Brave Max actually went up. I'm surprised. You know, I am surprised they never did a reissue Brave Max or a Grand Max. Well, out well, of I, I out of that they, they reissued Fort Max, but right. even though they had the main mold, they didn't do the other two. Well, why? Actually, Duran, they well they were going to. That's why you have the shell for fun pub pretender megatron yeah is the uh, grand max was going to be the e-hobby exclusive and then when fort max did not meet sales expectations that but that's why the shell was pulled out and used for that pretender because it was already in production or at least to be you know ready to be used and so they so they found a way to get a use of that mold but that's why that's why Grand Max was not done for eHobby because Fort Max's sales was not there. But like you said, Brett, G1 Fort Max went down mm-hmm. because the Encore reissue was an Encore. It was, I mean, it wasn't an interpretation. It wasn't a reimagining. It was the G1 toy. Right. So, yeah. but but again, Brave Max and Grand Max are not. This, they're not the same toy, so and if you're needing those two, a regular Fortress Maximus would not fill the hole. Right, but um, it, there was actually a little bit of difference, and I it, when it came out, we talked about it, and I actually I think I even held both of them and told you they they're, they're actually the G1 actually weighs a little bit more than the uh, the Takara re-release, the reissue. And I think it's because they they thinned out on the plastic. I really do. I think they made it thinner. And there was a lot of a lot of people uh, bitching that there was uh, stress marks right out of the box and everything. And that just goes to show you that they they used a a thinner plastic. So it, it's here and there. there. Uh, the point being is is that one actually did affect the value of of the G one Fort Maxes. Mm-hmm. I mean, a box Fort Max was a grand all day long. They're down to like four hundred bucks. Five hundred. Mm-hmm. You, if you shop around, you could find a nice white, complete Fort Max in the box. Five hundred bucks. Yeah, my, my Fort Max is yellowing. the The sheets they do no good. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. That, just, well, it was funny you were talking about Minerva. Ages. Yeah, right. Well, you were telling me it was funny you were talking about Minerva, and I've actually heard of, of a Minerva yellowing in a closet, no yeah. light, and still yellowing. Exactly, and that's why I'm worried about my because I have uh, many years ago I got Hydra's Artfire, and I'm keeping him in a dark place, and I peek at him every now and then and just look at him and go, and then I close the close the box. But you don't, but you don't breathe dark. on him too heavy though. I don't know. No, I hold, I hold, I hold my. He don't sit there with the cigarette going. <laughs> blow, the, blow the cigarette yeah, smoke. Now, as it. funny as that is, I, <laughs> I have picked up many a collection. And uh, it aggravates the crap out of me. By the way, if you really want to aggravate a Transformer collector when you sell parts and, and bots and everything on eBay and you forget to tell them that you're a smoker and you get this thing in the mail and you open it up and the first thing you get is that big old whiff of stale cigarette, yeah, that 
That's oh, that's <laughs> nothing. I uh, I owned a uh, a uh, Flash Lyle convoy. Uh, I bought one about f- four years ago at a local toy store that was still in the box, complete. Got it home, uh, slid it out of the box, and the inside of the box reeked of uh, pot and incense. I-, I swear it smelled like somebody had been storing their weed in the in this box so basically you got a free contact high right off the bat Good for you. <laughs> i was yeah. really giddy about owning that toy i couldn't I figure know, out why all of a sudden i got real hungry and i had the munchies well, yeah well, which which is bad because the plastic fumes in the box will give you a contact high just off those plastic fumes it's like that you know back in the day when you were opening up a brand new transformer and it was still and you phone? Yeah. Okay. No, or even full disclosure. Full disclosure. How many people, when they got a brand new transformer, slit the tape, opened it up, and took a whiff just to get I a little did. Bit of, I did. I did. Yeah, I did too. It, because it was like it was that new toy. It was yeah. literally it, the with, new with toy the, smell. Was, yeah, new toy smell. Is that? It's like yes. You know, it's like it's like a new car. Right. But, but, but when you're not okay. Driving. Somebody right. needs to bottle that and put it as a uh, as a. Uh, air freshener in your in your car or truck. But I would also you get in there want, and you're like, oh, yeah, but I would you know buy what else I would shit. want? I, I would. I, would also want, <laughs> I want the old uh, toy smell. The like, old like toy. A, yeah, like an old. You, you get a it's slightly musty. Yeah, like yeah. comics. Comics are big for you. You can take a comic and just kind of, and well, you can smell it. Well, remember, you know? smell is one of the biggest triggers of memory. Mm-hmm. So we associate the smell of this with being younger, simpler times, a brand new toy, yada yada yada. There you go. And I just happened to pick this one up at a show. No big deal. It's just just a comic, a GI Joe comic. But yep, still smells like. It. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me when I was young going at the uh, comic shops because the whole place smelled like that. Yeah, yeah, it's nostalgia. Yeah. Love it. It- so just as much as you'd like that new car, that new toy smell, I want the vintage one too. And, you know, you know, I have to admit, one. I have to admit though, <laughs> I've done it with a few new uh, new toys, uh, and it doesn't smell like I remember it back in the day. I don't know if it's the combination of paint, die cast, and rubber well, uh, from the from the G one toys or what. Let me find it because um, I just got one. Okay, so I bought this for the wife and. Uh, I'm telling you right now. If what you is open that? This, that's that uh, the Bandai uh, Toy Story combiner. Yeah, this is uh, Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. And she's, she's already got the the Woody, and they actually combine to make a bigger one. But there's one thing it has. I bet she's got the Woody. <laughs> <laughs> so, look at that styrofoam. Oh yes. That's yes. that smell. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. You know, it, I have it, to. Uh, old styrofoam when we were kids whenever i opened up uh, kfc's king gorilla the the eight face the other day uh it had that scent you know the the old uh, the uh, the 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 chinese factory the styrofoam the uh, the plastic you know you open it up and you're like that you smells just, right you could just <laughs> smell the sweat and tears from all those little kids no, you it's. It. Didn't you see the video that we shared on on, t- on on the Facebook group the other day? It's all those uh, all those uh, little little Japanese women with the with the robots coming down drilling it in the in the in the crotch and stuff. Like, don't you know that was just for advertisement? They didn't want to really show you the what's going on in the back with the sweatshop. Anyway, um... <laughs> Don's like, I just want to smell toys. Yeah. No, we'll like, see. Yeah. This went so wrong so fast. Yeah, so. but. <laughs> But it's also like, you know, um, again, uh, it's, you know, going into a kitchen and smelling a smell or going into a restaurant or going to a mall and some, and you smell something like uh, the cookie factory. When there used to be cookie factories and malls, you would go by and you would smell the cookies and you would remember that or go into an Orange Julius and you would smell, I would, that reminds back when there were still What's Orange the, Juliuses. What was the pretzel place? Auntie Anne's. Yeah. yeah. Just, again, it's all based it on... be all the way down the hall. Okay. Right halfway across the mall, and you could still smell it. How, uh, how many people <laughs> associate this smell, can associate with this smell? The mall at Christmas. 
you know you got the smell of uh, the, the 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 pine trees the fake pine the 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 decorations the the cinnamon in the air from all the all the Christmassy scents that are uh, that the stores are selling yeah yeah I mean yeah or or if you were, or if you're in a retail store like say Kmart and they've got the and they got the scented pine cones mm-hmm. and you walk in and you get all that cinnamon so yeah it's, yeah it's 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 all based on nostalgia and again that ties back into what we're, what we're talking about as far as if that character is nostalgic for you. And it's an important character. Well, you know, that's so you're going to pay more. That's for something else, that Don. Character. That's something else, Don. That I, uh, that you mentioned earlier when you were talking about Trailbreaker. Uh, and this is a tangent I kind of want to go on before we uh, we uh, we segue into uh, the the vintage KOs. Um, characters that you have an emotional connection to for one reason or another. Everybody has that one character that um, that they you know whether it be their very first Transformer or their favorite Transformer you know like mine is Weird Wolf uh, I know uh, uh, Gerald uh, Ford uh, his his is uh, 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 Gears I think see I'm, my mine is five yeah I have five and, and Don knows what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, ever I mean, you. I mean, I'm. It. It may not be just a single toy. Me, I, well, it's it, not it, just a single. It is. It's. It's Bruticus, but it's kind of five. But yeah, but well, Bruticus, I mean, a lot Bruticus, of pe- a lot of people though. They're they're they have several characters that they 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 that just something can they connect with. Uh, for me, for example, um, it, it, it was an emotional moment. I, I have to admit, whenever I opened up. Titan Returns Triptychon. Uh, that that feeling when you slide it out and you finally put the legs on, and I, I, I posed him there. I hadn't put the yeah yeah Brett. You know I, I'm trying to be serious here. I, I know, but you that know, really went went bad just in my head when you slide it out bad. and put the legs on. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it really. It At least really I didn't bad. say. And, and then you start going down and you start smelling that 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 new smell. You know. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go, and then when I'm done, I need a cigarette. <laughs> well, you know, see, I mean, see, red button, red button. Red yeah, button. No, there's. I'm gonna get. I'm where's gonna get the kick flag. button here? <laughs> I'm just gonna get a red flag and just sit, sit here and go. Back and, back and forth. Well, you know, we 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 got that explicit tag, uh, you know, a few years so we back. We have to use it. Well, when we got that explicit tag a few years ago, whenever whenever Swage was on, you know, <laughs> but you know, kind of hard to get rid of it, huh? Yeah, no, not with puns like that. No, but uh, <laughs> seriously though, going back to Triptychon, uh, whenever I, I took it out of the box and uh, and assembled the legs uh, onto the figure and just stood it on my ottoman, uh, hadn't stickered it at all. Uh, I had I didn't really pose him. I just pretty much stood him up. Uh, he had that G one esque pose, you know, uh, tail dragging the ground. He does look very much G one. The mo- uh, the I, I was overwhelmed. I was honestly overwhelmed with emotion uh, because uh, I loved Triptychon in the uh, Triptychon in the cartoon. He was a very memorable character, you know. You uh, you know. Who will forget the episode Thief in the Night, you know, where he st- uh, stole the Taj Mahal and Fort Knox and, uh, you know, and, and all he wanted was Energon cubes from Octane, I, you know. I, it, the only thing I thought was funny about that whole thing is when they would animate him running with his tail up in the, and he'd run on, instead of having his tail drag yeah. when he walked. But it, the thing is, is the new toy can, can mimic cool. that look. <laughs> really? The tail yes. goes up? Like, oh, okay. The tail, Yes. <laughs> Here, here's one thing I was thinking of, and, and you really, really reminded me of this, and it was one thing that actually bugged me when I first got um, Metroplex, which, if you'll remember, I, re- I immediately returned that toy. I never kept my Metroplex. As much money as it goes for now, when it first came out, I bought it and returned it. But the thing I always thought was stupid, and you talked about assembling the legs, mm-hmm. think about G1. Did you ever have to put your toy together? How hard is it for them to actually... Assemble the toy and make it maybe just a bigger box. You know what Omega I mean? Omega Supreme. Well, it was made that way. I'm saying yeah. your Triptychon didn't come with legs off. Your Metroplex didn't come with an arm off. 
but the new one did. Well, the Metroplex had the kneecaps and everything all off to the side and all that. It, it just bugged me, I, I, especially that Metroplex. I mean, how hard would it have been to make the box a little bit bigger? I don't think the Takara my... one has, you have to assemble it. I, think I don't it, think so because it's a window, right? No, no, the Takara one comes in a, a, just a slightly larger box. Maybe. But for, I, I know uh, for... it, I know a lot of it has to do with um, shelf sizes, and they, they allot so much space for toys and all that, and I'm sure there's a reason for it. But I always felt a little, little cheated. And it's not because you had to snap it together or whatever. It's just because when you open that toy, you're it's like a presentation. Think about it. You know, you open it, you, you cut the tape, you open it, you slide it out. You this open guy. It, you, uh, it, it's just it, Movie it's all part of it. Masterpiece MPM3 Bumblebee. I could not for the life of me figure out. It was packaged in car mode uh, with basically, let me see if I can get it out here without, I hate this part. Yeah, both doors were out like this, and that that back part was like hanging out there. It was just like sp it was spread out. You would think that it would have been more secure in the package if they had just put it in there and pegged together compact was it, car mode. No, was it the freaking it was, doors? It was actually were open. made with the doors open. The doors were open. It was spread out in the package. Why? It made no sense whatsoever. I was well, sitting there, I, I slid it out, and I'm like, why in the hell did they do that? That, that really doesn't make much sense. But then think about um, Prowl. You know, when they did when they did the first Prowl in the nice little tight boxes, like all the uh, Takara ones are, real nice, you know, mm -hmm. uniform. And then when they did the Toys R Us one, they did it in room-up mode, and the damn thing was, you know, or, or Bumblebee. The, the, the box is like, more than twice the size, and it just I didn't understand why they couldn't have kept the same. The, the I, reason I, they did that, I think, is so that they uh, that perceptually you thought whenever you and notice that they didn't have windows on the boxes, they got it, yeah. so, uh, they did that so perceptually you uh, in your mind, bigger box, the higher price point, I'm getting more money for my uh, my buck. Do you think, uh, conversely, that that's why they make them so compact in Japan is because space is limited? I think so, because uh, from what I understand, Japanese toy stores, as well as not, as as much like Japanese housing over there, you don't Very have tight. a lot of room. You know? so, yeah, so it's like uh, if if I'm not mistaken, didn't uh, wasn't Hing that said that most Japanese collectors don't even display their collections. You know, they, they, because, of, because of room? They don't have the room. You know, like the display cases like you and I have behind us, is they, they wouldn't do that over there. It, it's Everything would be in a tote under the bed or in a closet. They, they just have like better that. taste than you or I. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> but, you know, going back to the, the emotional conne connection thing, though, you know, it's like certain characters that whenever you open them up, something you feel something, you know. You know, not every Transformer gives you that feeling. You open it up... Uh, you know, most of the time, I think the most common feeling is like, oh, this is cool, you know, something like that. But if something is such a, a love letter, if it, were, if it were, as it were, to the original character, like Trypticon, you open it up and, and it's so close or such, such a imaginative, beautiful rendition of a character that you remember. Uh, and in Trypticon, you know, not only does he look like Trypticon, he has the same form, uh, much of the same features, but he is also enormous, you know, and it, and it just adds to the feeling. It just overwhelmed me. Uh, Fans Toys Lupus, whenever I unboxed that thing, as big a Weird Wolf fan I am, I literally had tears running down my face because this is the Weird Wolf toy I wanted as a kid, you know. Well, how many but, toys but, does that to you? Well, and I'm now now to kind of bring it back to our point. Do you think that maybe interest is waning and going down because you've already got that one figure? That most of the you know collectors, I mean, collectors, a lot of them have been around for years and years and years, and they've they got it all or they got what they wanted. Not everyone is a completist. You know, I mean, not everyone has what Daniel does, where I got to get one of everything and all that. And, you know, it, I, I, it's kind of a curse, you know, it's, it's, I, I would think so. 
that you well, had to get every single thing. It, it's kind of a curse. Do I want it? No, but I come this far. I kind of, kind of keep going. Well, going back to what I was, you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm paring down my collection, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I know I've talked to you about this. You know, as much, I, I love Transformers, probably always will, and I, you know I don't think I'll ever completely stop buying Transformer toys. I, I will probably still buy from time to time, but my ideal goal is that within the next year, you know, I, I've got a substantial pre-order list and I, I want to take care of, uh, and then Power of the Primes has several figures that I uh, that I've, I've got to have, um, but. And then after that, there may be an occasional third party or official masterpiece that I'll pick up. But I want to get to the point now, and, I, and, and that's where I kind of see myself in the, in, in the next year. But I want to get to the point where I, I basically stop because I'm at that point now where, like, you know, I'm tired of chasing the best version of every character. Uh, you know, as far as Generation 1 goes, at one point in time, I have owned virtually every Generation 1 toy. Uh, you know, there's uh, outside of a few ma uh, Micro Masters and a few uh, Action Masters, and then there's several Japanese characters that I never owned. But as far as U.S. released Generation 1, I have owned nearly every one of them at one point or another. So I've experienced every one of those molds. I don't feel the desire to go out and and, and this is I, I'm not saying that I'm I'm considering myself the bar, but I just suppose that there's a lot of collectors out there that feel much the same way I do. I've already experienced these molds. You know, I know what they're like. I've owned them at one point in time. Uh, so I can, I don't have the need to absolutely actually have them. Um, so, you know, I'm not going out and searching them. So uh, the more people that feel like that, like I do, the less people that there are buying the toys out on the market. Well, it, it, I agree with that a hundred percent. Uh, like I was talking to Don, uh, pre-show, I said, you, you know, I'm down to just a handful, uh, of, of stuff that I need, and then I'm I'm pretty much done. Uh, I mean, there's I need I need one more Dino cassette combiner, and three more Headmasters, and I'm still looking for a really really nice uh, Raiden gift set. Other than a few boxes to fill in my boxed G1, I'm done. Do I see myself going down as far as how much I spend? I do, and I I'm with you. I'm not alone. It, whether it's you know. Turn and it's not, and it's just, not, it's, well, it's not, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, and I've gotten this, this comment so much since, uh, especially since I put, uh, my lists up for sale and, you know, the list is getting smaller, but it's about to grow some more because there's more stuff that I want to add to it. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of people have asked me, it's like, why are you getting out? Don't you, uh, don't you, you know, don't you want to? collect anymore and it's not necess it's not that i'm still a fan i still love the toys i'm still going out and buying stuff uh that i that i want it's just i want to there's other things that i want to do so you know and and, and it doesn't just because i want to do other things and allocate money to other things doesn't mean that i want to you know put transformers behind me by no means, you know, I, you know, I, my, my pickup truck is emblazoned with transformer insignias, you know, um, you know, I've got, you know, transformers on my phone. My girlfriend's got transformers on her car. Uh, you know, she's got t-shirts, you know, it's not, it's not going away any, you know, by any way, shape or form. Yeah. I still, you know, got artwork hanging all, all over my apartment. Um, you know, still going to be doing this show. You know, so yeah. Transformers is still a huge part of my life. It's just that I'm not going to be uh, actively buying as many toys as I have been. Well, we, we talked about that before. I don't, I don't, you don't have to. To be active, it, it's still, you're still part of the community. You're still active. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to spend money. No. Yeah. That, 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 and, some people put those together, but they don't. And, you know, and, just parlay that uh, before, I'll let you finish, Don. I just, uh, but before, it's, 
you know, and and I, I just see that as a reason why a lot of things are going down in value on the market is because I'm not the only one doing that. You know, sure. Uh, I see some of the younger guys. Let's say, you know, Michael, and uh, and then go younger than that and go to Sergio and and uh, and Jack. You know, they're in their escalating years where there's you know, uh, Michael's probably still got a few years of 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 growing. And getting all this, all of this stuff, you know, Jack and, and Sergio are really just starting, you know, on their on their on their journey of, hey, I have disposable income. I want all the toys. You know, we were there at one point or another, and now sure. here we are, old people, <laughs> old people. Some of us older than others, Don. Yeah, um, and we're just not buying as much, and it's not because we don't want anything. It's to, uh, necessarily it's just that we just don't have the desire to get stuff because we either have it or have had it, and don't need it again. Maybe. You know, um, yeah. you know. Well, the, go ahead, Don. Yeah. Well, basically, all you're doing is what people have been doing for collections. You know, since since the human race found realized that hey i like this stuff and want more of it and we'll we'll look at john and carl hartman as a perfect example for over 10 years they put blood sweat tears and a whole crap ton of money into creating botcon and i don't think any of us here can actually express how important botcon was to the continuation or the importance of the brand as far as gaining exposure for it keeping it going things along those lines i'd say it's it would be easy to say that the hartmans have had a large part in the history of transformers right as a brand i'm going to say that they've had just as much impact and i'm going to catch feedback for this they've had just as much impact on the collecting community of transformers as ebay has Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. Oh, I, don't I would dare say that. more. No. But yeah, think about it. But look, but look when John and Carl decided to get out. It wasn't because they were t- they didn't want to collect anymore, but they had other priorities: owning a home, getting married, and I completely respect them. And I and I, and I'm a little envious that they got to the point where their priorities shifted to the point where this was part of who I am. I enjoyed it. I loved it. Now it's time for the next stage of who I want to be. And and it's something that no one can ever take away from them. No. Exactly. They accomplish that. And, during, and they don't I, hide, they don't hide it and they're not ashamed of it. Exactly. And they don't flaunt it either. No. And I am sort of envious of them and of you Duran because you can see behind me. I mean, I'm the oldest person of the group. I'm 40 I turned 47 and we've talked about this before. I have not sold near what I felt I should. Because I am getting older. I have no wife. I have no girlfriend. I have, I have no one to leave this to except some cousins who, by the time I pass away, hopefully, they'll be too old to care. And most of them probably don't care, uh, to be honest, Don. Most yeah, they, of them probably don't care now. Yeah. You know, mm. one of my cousins is, is huge in the band, which I never was because my, my, my chance to be in the band kind of was taken away from me. And this one but, time in band camp? Yeah. Well, long story. Um, but, uh, basically I need to be selling more. I'm, I need to be what you're doing. I need to say, okay, but yet I'm still buying. I just bought Omega. I'm working on devil stinger. I just got the two Megatrons from last night. I just got Cybertron and it's like, but that's just it, Don. You it's, that's okay. I, I I too, I'm in my paring down stage. I'm selling stuff. I still have yet to pick up. I've got on pre-order the Fans Toys Omega. There's 300 bucks, boom, right there. You know, I have a. I got mine for a little bit less than that. Well, I'm 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 no, round I'm, I'm rounding I'm rounding it up actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm getting mine for probably less than you are actually. Uh, but um, I'm getting mine for two for both sets. Oh Jesus Christ, you guys, give it a break. Um, but I I've might got, say something else, but I'm not going to. PG thirteen, dude. I have a Nero Rex that I'm still well, yeah, a sealed you, Nero you Rex. Win, you win on that because that's a gorgeous piece. Yeah, a, a sealed Nero Rex that I'm uh, I'm still going to pick up and I'm going to keep. You know, uh, but the thing is, is that 
um, you know, I'm in my decline, my, my, my downgrading stage of my collection. Yet here, there's some still pricey pieces that I'm going to be adding to my collection. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, and that's just, just goes to show you that there's, there's nothing wrong with buying stuff and still selling. Oh yeah. It, but I'm just, the reason I'm looking at it is Brett's again, like, yeah, tell, uh, tell me something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I, just, I, I have a little thing to add, but go no. on. But it's like, well, you know, well, y'all know y'all remember our friend JD over, yes. over, at, over at, yes. we lost JD Rest a couple years soul. ago yeah. in RFC and he had a large collection and his wife sent me, me and Brian Kill, we sent a lot of the collection, and I'm still trying to parse that out for her, uh, trying to sell it for her. I, I'm, I've had to go back, and some of the boxes got mixed. I'm, now I'm trying to match Armada missiles and Energon missiles and all this kind of stuff. So it's slow going. But I'm doing that for her because she didn't know. There's no way she could have handled the collection uh, to get rid of it, and that's what I'm trying to do for her. I don't want to, I don't want to someone to have to do that for my collection. Just, for, you well, know, real quick, for anyone that's that's thinking about this, what we've talked about, I know it's kind of grim, but we actually yeah. did an episode about that. Absolutely, things yeah. you could do and everything. So, you know, you guys might want to go back and look at one of our older episodes about that because there was a lot of good tips. I will look that know. up while, uh, while you're talking. A lot talking. of good tips. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm not bringing that up to be a downer. I'm just saying. No, no. You know, when you talk about, you know, so you have to you have to look at your life at a certain point and say, I need to start planning for the future. And again, that's something we all need to consider. But the problem is they keep coming out with so much good stuff. And you <laughs> want to be and you want fans toys Omega. Did you ever think we would have and I'm not an Omega fanboy. Would I jump all over an animated Omega? Oh, hell yeah. But even G1 Omega, that is not one of my top 50 characters. This toy, it's so phenomenal. I have to have it. I, I watched just... uh, Optobotomus's uh, review on it, and I'm like, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I, I kind of want it. And then I watched his review, and I'm like, yeah, I, I want it. I, I want yeah. it. I want it hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, you know, it's that's one thing you have to look at, especially when we talk about value. Everything will eventually, like we we, we mentioned this before. We thought alternators and vinyl tech was as good as 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 good. This is it. This is as good as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Then we get, <laughs> then we and, and then we get universe. Oh, this is as good as we're going to get. Uh, the, well, the, just, the, just look at MP1. The episode oh my God, that you that was were great. the episode MP1. you were referencing. Oh my God! Uh, the episode you were referencing the uh, uh, what happens to our toys when we die episode TFYLP episode 153. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, check that out. There's some some great info in that. So, but I'm tying this all back into the whole value thing before, right. before, we, before we move in. You have to look at is what you're getting now more value for your collection than what you already have or is it just another one of three or four representations so again value to me value always goes back to being subjective from person to person well there was one thing i was going to say um <clears throat> uh well first of all uh i know i give you crap and it was just funny i'm just i'm gonna go ahead and say it i give you crap about being older but you, you're less than a year older than me. That's it. Even really? though I have this, I have this really young look and you know everything. But yeah, I'm. Well, I'm well you 46. do look. You do look kind of. You do look like Opie. So yeah, I, it's okay. I'm just younger looking. That's okay. But no, so don't feel bad about that. What I was gonna say is, is that think about for every every person that is downsizing their collection or only buys here or there, or whatever. The community needs people like you who buy more. And I'm not going to say that you buy, you know, a god awful amount because I, I, I know people, I know one in particular that does, um, buys three of everything, you know, or, or two of everything, depending on how many modes they have and displays all of them and everything. And they have to have everything. And so there's, there's the extreme. And we talked about this before extreme collectors and, and blah, blah, blah. So, but, if you look at the community as 
for Transformers, there's this much product, there's this much money that needs to be going in. You need people to offset the people that don't buy a lot. Otherwise, if there's no money to be made, they're going to stop making it. So, you know, it's like the yin and the yang. you got to have both. So I wouldn't look at it as a really negative way. I wouldn't. Now, uh, dealing I'll, with I'll, it afterwards in space, yeah, good luck with yeah. that. <laughs> Although Massey doesn't mind because it's more boxes for him to sleep in. Well, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, just a, a free bed for him. Free bed. That's right. But, you know, um, let's let's kind of change gears here. Um, you know, in recent years, we've had third parties come along and, in a sense, knock off intellectual property. Let's let's not beat around the bush. That's essentially what third parties are doing. Uh, while they are original and new molds, uh, the intellectual property, i.e. the characters that they are representing, is a straight-up knockoff of an official character. Uh, but this is nothing new. Uh, Hasbro themselves, Hasbro and Takara themselves, are guilty of it by knocking off, uh, like with the 84, 85 cars, uh, you know, they didn't go out and get the official car licenses to get the, uh, to use the likeness of a Lamborghini or a Porsche or, or any of those things, uh, or a Fuso a fire truck. They didn't do that. Uh, so in a sense, that is a knockoff of uh, intellectual property, even though it's in toy form. Um, and then generation one toys themselves, uh, were knocked off. Uh, Brett, this is, uh. Good jump, uh, jump, uh, jump. Is this, is this my you. segue? This is your segue. All right. You're just going to so, hop on that and ride around San Francisco all happy like. Heck yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, granted, the, the newer, what are they called? High, high end knockoffs that are coming out, have been coming out since the mid 2000s, where they're exact knockoffs of G1 in. Cheap boxes, you know, I mean, I think the first ones were like the Insecticons and everything and all that. I, I, that that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a straight-up knockoff of a G1 toy. I'm talking about, like, um... The idea. Oh, let's just go with this one first. Ha! Huh. Uh, Weird Wolf. Okay? Love it. There's no one that can see... That would say, oh, that's a G1 Weird Wolf. Of course not. It, it is gold chrome and yellow. It is god-awful ugly. I want it. But but it's neat. And it actually came packaged with another god-awful gold chrome. Wouldn't mind having it, but don't, don't need it. <laughs> cruncher. And they're straight up. They're straight up uh, knockoffs uh, of the molds. That's a straight up knockoff, yeah. That's a straight up knockoff. Um and these are just ones that I had sitting around. Um, here's uh, is it Gasket and Gromit? Mm-hmm. Cog from yeah. uh, Fort, Max. Fort Max. And this one is in silver, chrome, and red. Once again, straight up. Just, I know, never knew that existed. Bolts. Yep. But um, back in the uh, 80s, they came up with goofier stuff. So they, how about a hook? It looks like that. Okay. Which is actually not. It's it's actually a member of uh, Mr. Hard Hat, and I think it's called Crane. I think that's the name of it. Crane. Yep, the main crane. That's the that's his name. The main crane. Not the main but, man. The main uh, crane. So the essentially the mold. Uh, I mean, does it transform pretty much the same yeah. way? The only thing that's even close to the original is this cab is very close to the original, and the feet do flip out like the G1. There's no metal, you know, and the and arms it, it does slide not, out, looks like. Yeah, and the, and the arms pop out just like a G1, just out to the sides, just like that. And it, it is also the top part of a combiner, right? It is a combiner, but it, it's, it's, it combines well, differently. It this is actually a leg. Oh, okay. He actually becomes a leg. Just literally, you do that, and he's ready to be a leg. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, And this is and the, done, uh, concept of what we're talking about is 
the knockoff of an idea. Right. So you have the idea of let's let's face it. You've got you've got the shovel. You know, you've got the the crane. They did uh, the shovel, the dozer, bulldozer, cement man, which I thought was a really good name. And then, of course, you have Truck Man, Excavator Man. Sounds like a Mega Man game or something. (laughs) To make Mr. Hardhat. So basically, construction vehicles that combine Mm -hmm. together to make a large robot. Wherever did they get the idea for that? I know. Shocking, right? Yeah. Well, this was a company called Four Star. (laughs) And let me pull up a couple pictures here. Um, oh, I can do this. So they came out in individual cards like this, and then they came out in a gift set, much like shocking mm-hmm. Devastator did. Mm-hmm. But they had this Mr. one, Mr. Hard Hat. Mr. Hard Hat. Um, and some of the best things are actually the little bio cards on the back. Um, my favorite was, and this is a little side note, they did um, Cassette Man. I mean, everyone knows who Cassette Man is, anyone that knows Transformers. It, it was just a, uh, a Shanti version of uh, Soundwave. Sound On the back, it's the little bio, and I don't have it handy, but it is, if, if you ever can find it on the internet, whatever, it's hilarious. It's, it's really, really funny. Now you have uh, piqued my interest. You need to look that up. Okay, this one says a construction six construction vehicles that convert to fighting robots and back. Each vehicle consists of accessories that can be used in vehicle or robot form. All six construction vehicles can be assembled and converted to create a giant fighting master robot. Mr. Hardhat. Create scenes of construction vehicles and robots in action. Building, moving, and saving the world from outside forces. Saving hours the- of fun. It even says on there, they promise. Hours of fun. Yes. The hard hat. I'm sure they were. And they are. Now it's a robot. Now it's a truck. It's Mr. Hard Hat. You can't make this stuff up. This is this is good old 80s fun. Um, but- they did another one that was called uh, Racetron. All right, and Racetron was just a bunch of, you guessed it, vehicle, uh, ro- uh, cars that turned into a giant robot. Let me see if it had something good. Eh, this was kind of disappointing. Yeah. Although, although the cars were, were really good in their names. So you had a Cadillac. Cadillac Cattle, man? Cattlebot. 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 Moo. You had a Fiat. Be a bot. <sighs> you had a Chrysler. Christ Come on. Bo- Christ bot. Christ bot. <laughs> you, had a, you had a BMW. Come on. Beamer bot. Uh, that would have been better. BM bot. Oh. God. So you had bowel movement bot. <laughs> um, you had a Porsche. At least it's not BJ bot. That's true. <laughs> Porsche, which was Porsche bot. And you had a Pontiac, which was Ponty bot. Ponty bot. Body bot. <laughs> Ponty bot. Body bot. Like I said, some of this stuff you just you know it. To me, the box artwork is is actually funnier and neater than the actual well, toy. Like on the Mister Hard Hat, you know, uh, we was pointing out um, before we went uh, on on the show here how the box art is so reminiscent of G One. Like that uh, the, oh, yeah. the 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 truck uh, the truck man. It looks like Long Haul's box art just just altered. Right. So he's talking about right here. Long haul. And yeah, that's what that is. That looks just like it. Now, um, some of them were skewed a lot. Um, but you could almost make out right here, Bone Crusher, but they added the wing in the back. Yeah. The front's almost like Bone Crusher. Um, and then to make it even funnier, and I don't have them here, um, the little weapons that they came with and everything, all, all they were was just really, really bad remolds of G1 Guns, you know, Omnibot wet weapons and stuff like that. It's just, it's and as a matter of fact, one of them, you'll love this. I, I got it somewhere. Um, I do. I got it right here. So, one of the weapons is actually this. 
Cyclonus? No. No, you 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 never get. It's not a transformer weapon. What is that? That's a remold that they got off of the ATST from Star Wars. Uh, the little part that went on top. They just took it and remolded it into this. So they, wow. man, they ripped off everybody. You know, um, you got a nice little unchromed uh, Mirage missile. Yeah. Um, that's what they use. I mean, it's just weird, weird stuff. But that's the difference, okay? You you, you went straight from a straight up, you know, recolor re, you know, to to this. I I wouldn't even call this a retool. You know, it's just it's so different. It's original, yet the uh, the the concept of it is clearly a okay. Uh, let's I like this transformer thing. Let's make our own. So and here's here's the neat part. So I'm going to screenshot this, uh, and, the, and I can definitely screenshot this if it'll allow me. It's not doing it. Is it screenshotting? Screen sharing? Screen share. No, we're still we're still looking at dawn and dismay, and you're mm -hmm. staring at the screen. Mm. There it goes. Okay, there we how's go. that? Uh, spinning beach ball right now. Well, circle. Now, guess is clear. It's thinking about it. Oh, I'm thinking. showing it loading. It's just, yeah, it's just thinking about it. Yeah, is that what you're getting, Don? Yeah, I'm getting nothing but blank spaces. Well, crap a doodle. Let me try it again. Let me go ahead and stop screen sharing. Let me All go right. ahead and try it again. Any better? Same. Yeah, nothing. Well, fudge. Anyway, fudge what on a stick. What what I was going to show you is, is these are images um, TFW has, and I'm definitely allowed to take a you know use them because they're my pictures. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it shows all the different uh, forms. The, the they have a attack modes, which all you're doing is you're taking the combiner bits and slapping it on it, which Constructicons had too. So, well, shoot. I wonder why it's doing that. It's anyway. being crotchety. I tell you what. In any case, I guess we're just going to have to go with, because I had all these different pictures and everything, but I guess we're just going to have to go with what I got here. Um, and I'm not going to be able to put one together quick enough, but they did uh, jets. And this is what they're most known for, four star, is they did jets and they did them in you know, white and, and black, and but they did things a little different. Like, here's the wing. It's totally remolded. Totally remolded wing, but the center body piece is straight up knockoff. It, it is and it isn't. Um, here's the uh, fins, and they're different. It, it, it is like, like the chest is and all that. The feet aren't. See how big Those they are? are some big, cloddy feet, yeah. You got some big old feet. But the other thing is, is the head. You're not going to be able to see it. They had two different heads. They, they had the, the feet that looked more like the, uh, the G1 Seeker's feet, and they had these. The one with the G1 Seeker's feet had the face that looked just like a G1 Seeker face, which they all had the same face. Um, this one looks more like, and they call it Jetfire. It's got a visor. It looks more like a Jetfire face, and you're not going to be able to see it, probably. It's too dark, yeah. Yeah. But um, I can try and get some pictures of it. But it's just those two were remolded. But, yes, I mean, you know, your thrusters, they're chrome, but they're the same. The canopy is a little different. It actually has a little ridge, which actually makes it stronger. And um, Somebody's alarm is going off. <laughs> oh, that's the phone. I have a voicemail. And St. Galvatron has tried calling me. Good for him. Yes. All right. But what's sort of interesting is even though these are knockoff remolds, these things go for an incredible amount of money in the collector's market because one, they're one like like everything else of the of that era is very hard to find intact or in good shape. And also because of all the differences, they're really considered different characters to some people. And the the especially the four star stuff brings 
Well, Brett, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the four star stuff bring quite a bit of price differences through the years. I got to be right back, but yes, yes, I did. Give me two minutes. I got a little mini emergency. Be right back. Mini emergency. Well, you know, uh, while he's way on, uh, I've owned some knockoffs in my in my day. You know, uh, for example, uh, I think my first really foray into those was uh, as as a kid. Uh, like he was showing, um, I, I forgot what the combiner set was. Uh, the Zybots. Uh, yeah. You know, I had several of those bots as a kid. Never knew that they combined together uh, into a, into a combiner. Uh, but then you uh, you fast forward to the Easter Basket uh, KOs, straight up, straight up KOs of G1 uh, combiners that were in the uh, Easter Baskets at Walmart, say, circa 2003, four, you know. Um, well, even better, uh, our own XV over RFC found fans project knockoffs in Easter Baskets about two years ago. The, really? Really? Uh, yeah, the uh, the swindle and blast off that they came out with to work with the uh, yeah the the Energon Bruticus set yeah those were those were KO'd and in Easter baskets as of two or three years ago. So wow. thir- third party stuff was getting knocked off and put in Easter baskets. Wow, <laughs> I had not heard about that. Yes, yes, the uh, the quality is boring. N- not. Uh, <laughs> no. Not fans, not fans. Project quality by any means, but well, it's like the Easter basket uh, uh, KOs from back in the day. Uh, they were made of what I considered party favor plastic. You know that rubbery, almost yeah. rubbery, very soft, uh, very pliable plastic. Uh, the the pins and the wheels were often replaced by like pinch, uh, like the little pinch nubs that yeah, you know, rivets or something. Uh, and then the um, uh, I mean, it was the connector point parts sometimes were mismolded and they didn't quite fit just right. I remember uh, I, I bought the uh, Superion uh, KO, and it had the the foot pads on it. the The peg was too big for the holes on the aerial bots, so you literally had to shave it down in order to put it on. Mm-hmm. And, I've had and that what's... problem before. Yeah. And and what's weird is though there are collectors out there who don't collect mainline or it's their secondary focus but it's all these KOs it's this this incredibly diverse WTF lines mm-hmm. like our our friend David everyone knows y'all all y'all everyone knows David. Yeah. yeah he has I have seen at his booth at Botcon the most outlandish outlandish Bootlegs, KOs, forgeries, every synonym you can think of to, to describe these things. I've, I've seen, I've seen pink bumblebees. I've seen Generation Three Infernos in like six different colors. It says Generation Three. He's mm-hmm. got six colors got on that one. Inferno. Uh, I've seen well, every every imagining of Optimus Prime in white and purple. I think I saw one in a farmer's plaid his trailer was like like a green stripe like a, like a plaid check or something and it looked like basically a rainbow threw up on it um, you know, the, the funny part is is you know why you don't see those at my booth because he wants hmm. to keep them all because i keep them <laughs> exactly <laughs> like like this weird and crazy thing how's this it's like an oversized uh, Superion in weird colors. Okay, it, it is, except that the middle, the shield and the middle bot is Hungar. So you have Hungar with a goofy head, and then you have the aerial bots. And yes, it's it's quite considerably large. That is but, what she said. Yeah, but don't open that too. Because if it's, if it's exposed to air, it will po- that gold will possibly crumble to dust. I don't know. But then the other thing is, it's like the, the shield is from Hungar, and then the gun looks like almost like uh, the Peronicon gun. It is. Hey, t- yes. No, just yeah. a little little retool. But it's just weird stuff like that, you know, and you get seekers like that look like this. Huh. You know, you and, know and that's, some, that's something else third party can do. 
knock off the four star mold designs. That way, you still have a seeker design that you would never no, normally never get, and it would still fit. Yeah, and I mean, you, you know as well as I do that seekers are one of those things that that people army build. You know, just just like uh, Rick does uh, sweeps. There's plenty yeah. of people that do that do seekers too. You know, and and the the more different that distinguishes them, the better your army would be. And then you know, weird stuff like nice yeah. little plane. Mm -hmm. uh, and I showed this one before because I just I absolutely love the fact that it turns into a dragonfly. So you have a and these little legs come out. So it's a little dragonfly. And mm. without a doubt, it has the dumbest looking head ever. That's what yeah. she said. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, bro, yeah. It's so bro, horrible, but it's good. Yeah, it's robot mode is being generous for that, but I yes, mean, they threw it in. They just yes. threw it in. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you're out and about, and you go to a flea market, and you or you go to a yard sale, whatever the case may be, give these KOs, give these little. There's a lot of hidden treasures out there. Little things, things that may have survived. It's like the converters. I remember oh, the I peacock. Guess. I've I've got the peacock somewhere. I've got the bat, uh, Robat. I think was his name. Uh, oh, I've bat. got the I've got the peacock. Well, even um, even GoBots were not uh, immune to the KO thing. I had a uh, knockoff of spoons for the longest time. The forklift, oh. the little uh, the little, uh, little forklift. I had yeah. a little orange KO of that toy for the longest time. Oh, the, I mean the the early '80s, the early the mid '80s was just a phenomenal time for. I can't tell you how many gray dive dives I've had, or uh, the little the knockoff of the Z-Bot dump truck that was. I mean, just. But they they have their a lot of people write them off, but they have their own little charm. There's several Z-Bots or Z-Bots that I've got. That I'm not gonna sell. Like Torque, he's very simple. He's just a blue sports car, but I like him. Uh, the jet, the the red and white jet. He's just a nice little figure. Uh, I've got I've got I've got the I've got the one the, the Zybot Chopper. I don't remember the name of the chop. We get to the chopper. But, get to the uh, chopper. Chopper. It's terrible, but I love it. So don't write off. I'm gonna try this crap again. Okay. See if it works. Olamash. Is it working? No. No. What the crap? It was working before the show started. That was before the show. Yeah, there, yeah, there you go. Anyway, so... Murphy's they, Law it never works when you need it, it to. Yeah. So, anyway, the Zybox did, and, and Zybox was made by Remco, and most people found, uh, like, that's kind of like a Kmart special type thing, although they did sell them at Toys R Us. Um Zybots did, it's called a multi-force 26 piece giant removable robot. And it made a combiner. I have been looking for this thing for years. I want it. If anyone can find one of these, I will pay ransomly, uh, heavily. Ransom. A ransom huh? on that. Ransomly. Ransomly. You, you have made a new word. I, I, I will pay time. ransomly. You will pay I handsomely. I will pay for ransomly it. heavily. How's that? For handsome, this. you will play pay handsomely, Brett. Yeah, and, and Brett, Brett uh, you might want to post that on the t on, post that from the TFYLP channel so folks know what to look for. Right, yeah, because just, uh, the thing story is not working. Yeah. But yeah, it's just uh, I absolutely want that. I've been looking for it forever because I already have Racetron took a little while, uh, Mister Hard Hat, and then I started getting the uh, individual ones. There's another one. Um, I only have two pieces too, but it's buried. I was going to pull that out. And it, it's like an oil tanker. It's similar to this guy, only he's green. And he came with a fist that plugs right into the – because he's an arm. And I found another one with a fist, two different ones. That's it. I know nothing else about it. Well, hey, hey, just to put this in perspective, the last time I saw that Zybot combiner mm -hmm. that outside of a show – was probably 1986 on an end cap at Roses, which which was and is a southern based department store chain. It used to be very big before Walmart came into the. I into think the, the South closest. East. There's one still in existence in Somerset, Kentucky. Yeah, actually, yeah. And I remember literally seeing it on the back end cap. 
It was twenty nine ninety nine at the time, and I did not have the money because I was with because I, I wasn't driving at that. I, I didn't have a car yet at that point. I had my license. Maybe. But yeah, that's the last time I saw it in the stores was at a Roses, and that was the same Roses that I the only Roses, the only place I ever saw Deluxe Insecticons on the shelf. I never saw Deluxe Insecticons anywhere else except for that one Roses. To, to put this into perspective, if someone actually had this Zybot or Zbot combiner, I would not hesitate at three hundred bucks easy. That's that's how much the, the, the people don't understand. Like 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 these, you know, the Mister Hard Hat and all this and the other. They they go for money. They do because, because they weren't meant to last this long. And there's not that many. It's like comics. It, yeah, you know, exactly. The, the reason Superman one is so valuable is because there ain't that many left. That's what that's why you had the '90s comic bust. Everyone right. was banking on all these comics being valuable, and they're not. But these right. toys are the exact same way. You just can't go out and pick up a Mr. Hard Hat. Yeah, exactly. And and, and there will be people that, well, I don't want it anyway or whatever. I do. Yeah. I do. And there's a lot of people that do. I'm telling you these. you know. And I, and I was going to bring out all the Dinobots. We didn't even get into that. There was so many retools of Dinobots. I have a Dinobot that was crossed with Godzilla. It looks like Godzilla, I've but it transforms that. like uh, Grimlock. Yes, I have that, and it's 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 an awesome piece. Where else are you going to get? It, it comes with a sword. Um, it's it's a sword slash gun that actually sticks in the butt and becomes the tail. It's kind of like the awesome. uh, Age of Extinction Grimlock. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. I don't know that one too well, so yeah, yeah. But that's yeah, what I'm it's I, sword to, or my, my point being is is that we we were talking about you know. Is it waning? Is it doing this? You know, the, the whole uh, collecting market. And then uh, I was like, you know what? We could just, uh, you know, um, we, we just wrap it up with, with the, the knockoff stuff because I this is the stuff I don't think it has anything to do with mainstream. Well, whether I, or not it's I think it's, this is different. I think it's a microcosm of, of what a lot of people are doing now and the reason why some of the... Uh, prices are plummeting on a lot of g1 toys and and some of the earlier like like beast wars and g2 and everything um it's just not it's not fetching as much money now because a lot of people they're like like i said earlier they're either getting out of it phasing out they either already have it or they're doing a lot like what you're doing going back and finding a lot of the small uh lesser known niche stuff uh, like right. uh, maybe some KOs, some obscure characters that that people don't really look for. You know, they're they're looking for those things. Well, that's part of the reason I got into Brave as big as I did because at that time I had gotten most all the Transformers that I had wanted without without being the Holy Grails, and then I discovered uh, Gal Gagar, mm -hmm. and then Dagwon, and then I discovered Brave in general. And it was like you know that that's that's it is, uh, and I, I I'm right there with you, Don. I love Brave. Uh, there's some great great stuff in there. Um, however, if you ever get to the point where you're you're selling stuff off and you sell some Braves, uh, or you go to sell Brave, be prepared because not a lot of people know about it. Even oh, I know. We've, yeah, we've done we've done shows dedicated yeah. to Brave. And it's mm -hmm. relation to Transformers. And, yes, it is related to Transformers of sorts uh, in, in that it was an official Takara line. Um, the thing is, is not a lot of people know about it. Exactly. And yeah. the demand for it is just not there. Except, not from the, ex except from the collectors that need, like everything else, they need certain pieces to complete. Like the, someone needs Great Gold or mm -hmm. they need Duke Fire, or they need... But finding uh, uh, finding something you need versus selling something other, not a lot of people are selling it, and the people and and the few people that are looking, it's difficult to find the pieces that you want. You know, exactly. uh, I mean, there's some great stuff out there in Brave, uh, and I don't want to say that to discourage people from going after some Brave. Matter of fact, I encourage uh, going out and finding some Yusha Brave figures. Uh, there are, if you love the blocky, uh, you know, G one ish goodness and, you know, robot to fantastic vehicle, 
uh, to giant uh, combined form. And let's let's be honest, a lot of the uh, combined forms of some of the Braves are enormous. Yeah, I mean, no, I, we're, we're talking we're, like we're, Titan we're talking, size, Titan size, easy. Yeah, exactly. But now, uh, just as a as a, uh, as a just as a quick side tangent, uh, TF Nation is coming up this weekend. Focusing uh, on Braves. It, I was yeah, um, Matt uh, Timey Wimey uh, from uh, uh, several several different podcasts, several different uh, uh, blogs and such is going to be in the. Well, he lives in the UK. He's going to be at TF Nation, and he's having a Brave panel. So, mm-hmm. if you're going to TF Nation, uh, please check out his Brave panel. You might walk away with uh, some 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 knowledge dropped on you. Yeah, our uh, our good friend Sid Beckett uh, will also be there. And he's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's taken virtually his entire Brave collection to show oh, off. Please, someone get pictures of that and post them yeah. online. Uh, so if you are going to TF Nation in the UK, uh, look for some. Uh, you are going to be in for a treat if you're not familiar with Brave. Uh, there is some phenomenal, phenomenal stuff in there. Uh, but uh, I think we've went off on a tangent enough, and uh, we've had some. <laughs> we've had some great. A uh, great discussion tonight. Um, uh, if you guys have any comments or questions on things that we've talked about tonight, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to us uh, here on our YouTube channel. And if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, uh, please like, rate, and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast uh, outlets such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, what have you. It's uh, the more people that subscribe to us and rate us uh, on there, it shows people, hey, this is what I think of this show. It's it's really good. Come and listen to it. Uh, it. It entices people to listen to us. And for everybody that's already done that, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Very much. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to do another thing. If you are a sub, uh, subscriber or you subscribe, please go on to your favorite uh, podcast outlet. And the first person that I see that has uh, give us a new review as of uh, August 12th, uh, 2017, if you have listed a new review since then, I will send you a, another free figure courtesy of our sponsor, CapturePrey.com. Uh, I will try to contact you and uh, just leave us leave us a good review. <laughs> That's all I ask. Um, so with that, if you guys have anything uh, further you want to mention? Nope, no, just, uh, uh, no, go ahead. No, just everyone have a real good week. Uh, enjoy enjoy the show. Uh, it, again, it'll be, be pre-recorded uh, Saturday, for on Saturday night. That's and, this show, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just have a great week, and we will see you live and in charge a uh, week after that. Yes. Uh, the other thing I'd like is um, in regards to the live auctions, please get on uh, get on the Facebook page and post what you want to see. You know, I, I, I would like to get a gauge, an idea of how many people we're going to get. I'm really hoping we get quite a lot of people to make this thing successful. I'd like to start doing this uh, maybe biweekly or even weekly. With uh, the different cast and everything, because everyone's got, everyone's always got something they want to sell or, or, or give away, and you know, I think this would be a great uh, opportunity to do so. Absolutely. So get on there and tell us what you want to see. And a quick reminder for those of you uh, tuning in late, uh, we're going to be doing some live auctions. Begamus is going to be doing some live auctions. Uh, as of this airing, it'll be Sunday, the Sunday following. So if you're listening on Saturday night, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, around 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern Time on our Facebook group, uh, mm-hmm. facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Um, so be sure to tune in there. Need at least 10 people. We're going to shoot for at least 10 people to be part of this mm-hmm. auction. Uh, but if we can get more, great. Uh, great. If you're not a part of the TFYLP group, all you have to do is request to join, and you'll probably be a, a approved right away uh there's several of us that are admins there and can add you like instantaneously uh mm-hmm. but uh yeah like you said get on there and tonight 
and tell Brett what you would like to see him sell. He's got virtual, virtually every line represented in some form or fashion, don't you? Yeah, well, absolutely. And and don't forget, I mean, it, it, it's going to be cheap. It's going to be stuff. You know, why why pay your eBay prices, your your you know Comic Con prices, whatever? Get this stuff cheap. Absolutely. And, and and I'm definitely going to do shipping like I always do. It's whatever it costs me is what it's going to cost you. I don't make money on shipping. So nope. there you go. Absolutely. Well, with that, we will wrap up. Uh, we're going to try to be live uh, next week. Uh, don't see any reason why we can't be. I will be around and uh, several other people quit taunting me. Quit. Just, just stop. Just Rawr. stop. <laughs> look, look, he even bites. <laughs> Anyway, we will see you next time on TFYLP. Follow us on Twitter at TFYLP uh, and go down there on our Patreon uh, page and uh, give us a little money each month if you love what we do. Uh, Patreon.com slash TFYLP. We'll see you next time, everybody. Good night. Take, Take care. care.